Now that GameStop has settled down a bit, is now a good time to buy? On GameStop's most recent annual report, they claim four different geographic segments, the US, Canada, Australia, and Europe. And across those four segments, they have 4,169 stores. They have three types of merchandise, hardware, software, collectibles, and then of course they have a trade-in market as well for all three of those. GameStop's business strategy, as stated on their most recent annual report, shows that they have three major areas that they're trying to improve. First, omni-channel retail. They are trying to improve their stores and their e-commerce. With the way technology is going, people want to buy things online. Brick and mortar is becoming a little bit outdated and it is less profitable. GameStop is really trying to improve their e-commerce and that plays into their second goal, which is achieve profitability. Their sales margins have been decreasing over the last five years and they are trying to turn that around by containing their costs and they plan to do all of these things by leveraging their brand. GameStop is the only store that focuses solely on video games. Yes, you can buy video games and consoles in Best Buy in a brick and mortar, and you can also buy video games online at Amazon, but neither of these stores are 100% focused on video games, so that is an advantage that GameStop is trying to leverage. My first question is what big moves has GameStop taken to achieve these three goals? First of all, let's look at profitability. They have closed two of their distribution centers, in January of 2023, they closed their Kentucky distribution center. And then now in January of 2024, they have closed their Pennsylvania distribution center. And as far as their brick and mortar goes, their stores, they have closed 287 locations between the end of fiscal year 2022 and 2023. And they have only opened up 43. They're closing their least productive stores and they're opening stores that they think are going to have a really good shot. So how has this played out? I have compiled GameStop's financials going all the way back to 2012, and it is clear to see that their net sales and their gross profit has dropped over that period, and their cost of sales has also dropped. When we look at their sales margin, this is the figure that I would expect to see increasing if they were truly becoming more profitable. In 2012 to 2018, they had historically a much higher sales margin, but you can see from 2021 to 2023, they have shown a slight improvement. So maybe they're improving a little bit. I would also expect the general expenses to be dropping off if they were becoming more profitable. And they have succeeded somewhat in dropping their general expenses and their expenses as a percent of their sales, which is good to see. The second and probably most important goal for GameStop is improving their e-commerce. They can cut costs all they want, but unless they can expand their revenue, they're not gonna be able to return much value to shareholders. So what big moves, what big steps have they taken towards expanding their e-commerce? Well, they have raised lots of cash. They haven't been very upfront with how exactly they're improving their e-commerce, but they've certainly raised a lot of cash to do it. And they've done this by issuing more shares, which is incredibly unfortunate. Here I'm comparing the number of outstanding shares to GameStop's share price. In 2019, when their share price was very low, they actually performed a share buyback which is very good for investors. However, when we had the first meme stock craze in 2021, to capitalize on that really high share price, GameStop started issuing shares with the stated goal of expanding their e-commerce. And then again, we've had meme stock craze round two. They've issued even more shares. At the beginning of 2020, they had 257 million shares outstanding. And now today in 2024, they have 426 million shares outstanding. That is a 40% dilution for all shareholders that were holding back in 2020. That's really bad for shareholders. However, if they're able to create a lot of growth with that cash, maybe it's not so bad. I wouldn't mind being diluted 40% if they're able to 10X their share price. So the question is, have they been successful with all of this dilution? What has all of this dilution actually bought for shareholders? To answer that question, I'm turning to their historical revenue. They have three major revenue streams, hardware and accessories, software and collectibles. Hardware and accessories have been dropping off since 2021, which we would expect as they are shutting stores. If they were succeeding with e-commerce, I would expect to see software sales increasing. 
However, since 2021, software sales have dropped by 25%. This is not what I would expect to see. Furthermore, some of the hardware and accessories are purchased through their e-commerce platform. If they were truly performing well on e-commerce and they were a completing their objective of growing their e-commerce, I feel like they would break those numbers out. They would actually show, hey, these are our sales numbers from in-store purchases. These are our sales numbers from e-commerce purchases. I looked everywhere. I could not find that breakdown. The fact that they're not upfront with that information leads me to believe that it's not going well. Now that I've sort of created a narrative for myself and how I picture the direction of GameStop, now it's time to use some real numbers and model the intrinsic value of GameStop. And for that, I like to use the discounted future free cash flow model. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, please do me this one small favor and hit the like button. It makes a big difference for my channel. I would really appreciate it. And I'll continue to do my part and make better and better content. Back to the video. Free cash flow is the money that a company uses to pay off its debt reinvest in future growth, pay out dividends, or perform share buybacks. Basically, the free cash flow is my return on investment. I don't care about the earnings per share as much as I care about the free cash flow per share. I want to know how much free cash flow a company is generating right now and how much they are expected to grow that free cash flow in the future. I won't go over every detail of the spreadsheet here. I've already made a full length video doing just that. I'll put a link right here in the corner if you want to check that out. Also, if you want to just download my spreadsheet and use it for free, I'll have a link in the description below. The past and present free, free cash flow I can find in GameStop's financial documents and the future expected free cash flow, I go to the analyst predictions. That's their job after all. And it's not looking good. The analysts are projecting GameStop dropping in revenue, dropping by 18.5% in 2024 and then a 4% drop in 2025. This is not looking good. Unfortunately, the analysts do not specifically predict the free cash flow, but one thing I can do is I can look at the past five years of free cash flow margin. That is the percentage of revenue that is free cash flow. I can take an average for that amount and then use that average free cash flow margin for future revenues. Unfortunately, the analysts did not project further out than two years. For this model, I need five years of projected future free cash flow. So I'm going to make one big assumption there. I'm assuming that GameStop's revenue will drop by 5% every year for five years, which is kind of in line with what the analysts are projecting. I'm also going to assume that their free cash flow margin is going to improve over the next five years by one point every year. Currently, their average free cash flow margin is 3%. So my assumption is that by 2028, they will have 1% positive free cash flow margin finally having a positive free cash flow. The next big assumption is the perpetual growth rate. This is basically inflation. What is the rate that the economy is naturally gonna grow over time? I'm putting 3%. And the last assumption that I'm making, which is a big one, is the discount rate. The discount rate is the cost of equity. And this is a number that you can look up for any company. This represents the return a company must offer investors to compensate for the risk of investing in the stock. And that's taking into account the inherent risk of investing in that company versus the market's overall risk. So for GameStop, that risk is about 8%. Now that all the assumptions are out of the way, the calculated fair value, according to the discounted future free cash flow model, is $2 per share for GameStop. And the current share price is about $25. With this scenario, GameStop is way overpriced. So the next thing I wanna look at is what scenario, what kind of future growth does GameStop need to have to make the current share price worth it? Despite what the analysts project, if GameStop is able to immediately start having a 10% revenue growth every single year for the next five years and succeed in improving their profitability and increase their free cash flow margin by 2.5 points per year, then their fair value would be $26, while their current share price is $25. However, when I look at the graphs and see the, the stark difference between what's been happening and what would need to happen, and I also consider the analyst's projections for just the next two years, it just doesn't seem like it's likely that GameStop is gonna turn their situation around to such an extent so quickly. And if they cannot do that, if they do not immediately turn it around, succeed for the next five years, and then have 8% growth into perpetuity, 
then their current share price does not make sense. Not only would they have to simultaneously shut down their worst performing stores to improve their profitability, they will have to generate a positive revenue return at the same time while shutting down stores. It just doesn't seem likely. Next, you're probably going to want your own handy spreadsheet to perform the discounted future free cash flow analysis. I've got a link in the description. You can have mine for free so you don't have to worry about reinventing the wheel and you might want to use it to analyze NVIDIA. If you're into games, then you've definitely heard of them. They have been absolutely popping off lately and I think a little bit too much. If you want to see my analysis on NVIDIA, you can check it out right here. Until next time. Catch on the flip side.